All right, you've been asking me about this one a lot. Anxiety. Let's talk about it. Superhuman. Now, I don't like to make these videos about me. They're supposed to be to help you, but my personal story fits nicely into this topic, so maybe it'll end up helping you. I was diagnosed with general anxiety disorder about a decade ago, and I've been managing it ever since. And it can certainly be difficult sometimes. Like the biggest one, that's the one that weighs me down the most, is just that worry that keeps you up at night. It keeps you from like trying new things. It keep, just haunts you like a ghost. So what is an anxiety disorder like? Well, in my personal experience, it's excessive worry or stress that doesn't really go away. And if you want a superhero analogy, it's kind of like having spidey sense. That's always tingling. And if you want to see a visual example of what I'm talking about, there are a lot of pop culture characters who I feel fit the bill. But the one that always stands out to me is Rex, the dinosaur, of course. Actually, he's more like, were you scared? Right. So let's talk about his anxiety. Toy Story is, of course, the Pixar movie where toys come alive and are forced to play with children, essentially making them personal slaves. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm actually a huge fan of Toy Story. In fact, I have a whole room dedicated to... All right, wait, we'll talk about that in a minute. I don't want to get sidetracked. So Rex. Rex is one of the supporting characters of the movie, and it seems like he does nothing but worry. He worries that his friends don't like him. I think I'm just coming off as annoying. He worries that he's going to be thrown away. I just don't think I can take that kind of rejection. He worries that his T-Rex arms are too small. My arms can't hold on much longer. Worrying is just kind of his thing. So if you're wondering what an anxiety disorder can look like, well, this is kind of it. Great, now I have guilt. And side note, Rex is voiced by this guy, Wallace Shawn, who is a brilliant actor. And sometimes it's fun to dub Rex's voice with some of Shawn's more dramatic work. One of the guards holds my arms behind my back. The other one starts hitting me in the face with his fist. My neighbor, Gene, who boasts about fucking colleagues at the office on the boardroom table. All right, so now that you've seen anxiety in action, let's talk about the four things that I do that help me manage it. One, you're not clairvoyant. Let's talk about The Watchmen. So what does The Watchmen have to do with anxiety? Well, as most of you already know, I've always loved these guys. In fact, the comic book used to be my background on the Equals 3 show, if you remember. This video made me realize I'm getting old. Now, the breakout character in The Watchmen is this guy, Dr. Manhattan, who's actually one of the most powerful characters in all of pop culture. He has the ability to teleport. He can manipulate matter. He also has the ability to, oh God. Oh, jeez! Okay, moving on. Now, he wasn't always blue. He used to be a regular guy, but then he got caught up in a nuclear physics experiment, and he came out very powerful. But yeah, he kind of looks like Jeff Bezos' fucking Jolly Rancher. And also, for some inexplicable reason, one day he just suddenly decided to stop wearing pants. Like, seriously, dude? I mean, have you seen the Watchmen movie? I swear, it's like three hours of just his dick. Oh, 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 oh. Oh no! Come on, man. If I wanted to see Blue Dong, I'd freaking hack Papa Smurf's iCloud. That's nasty. And yeah, I photoshopped this picture for you, cause I love you. <laughs> and by the way, just because you might think this is funny, a few years ago, a programmer made an independent video game where you play as Dr. Manhattan and you swing your dong around like a lightsaber. <laughs> Okay, so the important thing to know about Dr. Manhattan's powers is that he is clairvoyant. He perceives the past, present, and future as if they're all happening simultaneously. But he doesn't act on that knowledge because he doesn't believe he can influence it. Like it's all predetermined. Pretty philosophical stuff coming from a guy who refuses to wear underwear. Wait, let me, really quick. There we go, much better. I bring up his powers because that's the way anxiety works sometimes. Anxiety will trick us into thinking we're Dr. Manhattan and that we can see the future and we can see all these terrible things that are going to happen tomorrow and that it's all predetermined so the only thing we can do is just sit there and worry. But here's the thing, none of us are Dr. Manhattan. None of us know what's going to happen tomorrow. I mean, we can guess, but we might be wrong. So what really helped me was when I started constantly reminding myself that it is impossible to predict the future and that I have no idea what's gonna happen tomorrow. And I really do try and remind myself of that all the time. Like to an annoying degree. Two, chill on the caffeine. Listen to this crazy story. Listen to this. Back in the 70s, the Canadian government wanted to battle alcoholism. So they commissioned a comic book with a superhero to distribute this message. That superhero? Captain Alcohol! This is a real thing. So Captain Alcohol is a guy whose real name is, get this, Al... C 
alcohol. Well, they really got creative with that one, didn't they? Now, despite being a superhero, he never really saves the day because he's always wasted, which I blame his parents because how are you going to name your kid alcohol and expect him not to drink? Did he have a pothead sister named Mary Joanna? Cousin named Molly? Now, I don't know how this was supposed to convince anyone not to drink, but what I got from it was the thing he really enjoyed doing was actually keeping him from being a hero. And believe it or not, caffeine does the same thing to me. In fact, caffeine is one of the only socially acceptable addictions you're allowed to have. Like, you hear college girls brag about it all the time. Oh my god, mom, I am so addicted to this coffee. Like, so addicted. <laughs> you don't hear that with any other drug. Oh my god, mom, I am so addicted to this crack. Like, so addicted. Anyway, so I was drinking lattes like every day. Parents should have named me Mocha Latte. <laughs> Ooh, you suck! What? And just randomly, one time, this friend suggested to me, Hey, you should cut out caffeine and see how your anxiety feels. So I did. And guess what I found? Coffee was doing the same thing to me that vodka was doing to Captain Alcohol. So eliminating most of the caffeine from my diet easily cut my anxiety in half. And science backs all this up. You can easily look this up. Stimulants like caffeine are generally not good for anxiety. So if you're dealing with the same thing I am, then I suggest, I don't know, maybe try it out. Cut out the caffeine, see how you feel. Three, exercise. Yeah, exercise. Now this one doesn't get a pop culture analogy or anything. Just get off your ass and exercise on a regular basis. You'll feel better. It's one of the things that really helped me mentally. I know it doesn't feel like it's connected to anxiety, but I promise you it is. Look it up. Four, you aren't defective. I told you in the beginning that I'm a big Toy Story fan. Kelly and I have actually taken our spare bedroom and are trying to recreate Andy's room from the movie. So we got all the toys here, there and there, and, and hey, there's Rex. And we even built Forky. I'm not a toy! But we're not actually done. It'll probably be a few months before we can paint it and finish it completely. Now about six months ago, we went to a shelter and adopted a new cat. And we named him Prickle Pants, after the character in Toy Story 3. Told you I was a big fan. Now, Prickle Pants is what is known as a polydactyl, meaning he was born with an extra toe on each paw. Kind of looks like this. It's a genetic mutation, so he's technically a mutant. Now, I would say he's a superhero, but Dr. Manhattan set that bar pretty high. Now, his mutation doesn't hurt him. It doesn't cause him medical problems. The other cats don't see his extra toes and call him mean names like, hey, extra toes. Yeah, cats aren't really all that creative. No, Prickle Pants being a polydactyl is not a good thing for him, nor is it a bad thing. It's just kind of a thing that is. And that's what it took me a long time to realize about having an anxiety disorder. It's not a flaw. There's nothing wrong with you for having it. Sure, you might not enjoy having it, but it doesn't make you defective. Just like Prickle Pants' extra toes. It's just a thing that is. It's a trait that life handed you and now you're dealing with it. Because when you see it as a flaw and you start thinking you're messed up or damaged, you start getting anxiety about your anxiety. And that makes things 10 times worse. So I felt light years better once I realized, sure, I have an anxiety disorder, but there's nothing wrong with me. I hope this helps. Guys, I actually don't mind talking about my anxiety because, well, I don't feel alone. According to the World Health Organization, about 300 million people around the world suffer from some form of anxiety disorder. And I'll probably always have it. It's just I've gotten better at finding ways to manage it. And even though sometimes it might suck having it, like sometimes you might feel like Rex, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with being like Rex. Yeah, according to Josh Cooley, the director of Toy Story 4. There's a lot of love for this character and I think it's because he's so neurotic and kind of anxious all the time. And I think a lot of people see Rex in themselves. Right, because having anxiety doesn't make you weird or flawed. It just makes you a person with anxiety. All right, guys, I hope this helps. I'll see you next Monday. I'm responding to comments on Facebook and Instagram, so you know what to do. Girl, I'm like the big rib. I'm gonna do what I do no matter what you say. I'm living my life, ok fay, ooh yay. I guess that every Superman has a doomsday. I'm living my life, ok fay, ooh yay. I can take a loss, and I can handle rejection. I just wanna have an effect like Russia.